just wanted to ask, how do you suggest becoming vegan, like transitioning? Oh, right. Fantastic. Beautiful question. Just I love vegan. it. So I am going to be um, very precise and uh, not... Okay, let me just tell a little story then, a small story. Um, well, I, I was vegetarian for like eight years, and uh, I didn't want to be vegan for a few reasons. Uh, one of the reasons was, I, oh god, I really liked cheese. I like cheese a lot. <laughs> cheese is great. I know, I know, trust me, I know. I, I am just like everybody else. I grew up eating all the animals, all the animal stuff. So, I'm like, ah, I don't want to eat animals, but I'll just eat cheese, it's fine. Blah, blah, I'm not eating the animal. Dairy cows are artificially inseminated, often with a device known as a rape rack, so that they have babies and produce milk. Because humans desire the milk that was intended for these babies, the young calves are taken away from their mothers at birth, which is one of the most emotionally devastating things anyone can ever do. If the babies are males, they are killed for veal immediately, because they are of no use to the industry. Female babies will suffer the same fate as their mothers. Cows are then hooked up to machines three times a day to be sucked dry, which always leads to painful infections such as mastitis. As a result of this, dairy contains large amounts of pus, or somatic cells. After repeating the cycle of impregnation and milking, dairy cows become worn out and unable to produce profitable quantities of milk. Cows can normally live to be over 20 years old, but spent dairy cows are often killed at around 4 to 5 years old. Fortunately, there are many non-dairy alternatives, so there is no need to contribute to the dairy industry. And then, uh, okay, wait, before that happened, <laughs> I gotta get this, this story straight. Um, I was working on a project, and there were these two people there, these two fancy people, and they were vegans, and they were so, like, like, like jerks. Like I don't know. Like, like you know, like the type of people that are like they think they're better than you or something, and they're like, they're like, mm, this is like I'm like, oh, so you want me to go get you what a blah blah blah? Is they have cheese sandwiches over there or something? And and they're like, oh no, we packed our own food. And I'm like, okay. You know, they were just kind of mean, and then and then I felt bad, and then they made me feel bad for eating the food they were eating, and I'm like, this isn't right. This is bullshit. <laughs> it shouldn't make me feel bad. Um, but then what I realized much later on, actually, okay, there's something that happened before that. Jumping over right now. This is my this is my brain. This is your brain on Catherine. It's scattered. Um, what happened before that was this is a sad story. I'm gonna keep it really short and succinct. 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 Uh, yep, got my words. And um, so basically. Uh, online and uh, it was a video of the fur trade and I mean I hadn't, I hadn't worn fur in ever a long time, a long time or any sort of skin stuff and um, and it was just it, it was just it was a, it was a farm in China and the, the method that they took this the skin from the from it was mink or fox or something like just watching that uh, man, it was bad. It was bad. It was, I mean, okay, it, it, I'm gonna go right through it like a band-aid, but basically, it was still alive, they just cut it, and they ripped the skin off, and it's just skinless on the ground. So, that made me really upset, and I'm like, I mean, and, and, and something clicked in me, something clicked, and I'm like, wait a minute, I, I don't, I don't want to be a part of that. I, I don't, that's not fair. I, I like animals. I love animals. I'm going to cry just talking about it. And so, uh, and, and in my mind, I'm like, I, I know I don't wear fur or animals or those things, but it doesn't matter. Because at the end of the day, to what I realized was that an animal is an animal. I'm an animal. A fucking pig is an animal. A pig, interestingly, pigs can play video games better than chimpanzees. People don't know these things. Uh, and, and they're smarter than dogs. Pigs are, are, are like as smart as a three-year-old. This is a scientific fact. I'm a vegan, but the reason that I kind of started this was because I had a fish that was 
highly intelligent. When I would come through the door, and I'm also highly stoned, but I would come through the door and this blowfish would go to the side and get excited. And I would, you know, like my pig, my animals are very food oriented. So the love comes from the food giving. And I would always go give him his shrimps and all that stuff. And he really knew who I was. He really got excited when I was home. And like one day- cannibal fish. And one day, I, yes. And one day I ran into, uh, you know, I went to a sushi restaurant with a few of my friends and they were serving blowfish. And I thought, you know, they, this is an intelligent animal. And having a pig, my pig is and extremely more intelligent. My dogs still poop on the floor, and they're all like 10. I've never had a pig accident, which I'm happy because I don't really want to pick up pig poop, but it's actually better than dog poop. Erica, let's see if we can get a... Let's give it a whirl. A pig to go down for a belly rub. That's the best. Oh, boy. Oh! Oh, they love a belly rub. <laughs> what a man. Welcome to the Garden of Vegan, everybody. This is Matilda. This is how pigs are supposed to be living. Relaxing, chilling. In fact... Snoring. Snoring, too. Most people don't realize they're a lot like dogs. So they like ear rubs. Oh, my good Matilda. Yeah. Oh, and she's turning over for me, everybody. How dare anybody hurt her. Look at this face. She says, can I get a belly rub just like my doggy Doyle? She says, oh, yeah, rub my belly, please. What's going on, Matilda? I was going to lay on you. Are you saying I should have did it already? What's going on, sweet girl? <laughs> in check because it makes me, I don't want to upset anyone. So, so what I would suggest to anyone that ever wants to go vegan, the number one thing you need to do is get the education. That's what changed it for me. I started reading stuff. Um, 
I'm really gonna sh make a shout out. If you guys, everyone has YouTube. There's this YouTube channel called uh, That Vegan Couple, and they are amazing. They you are, they will teach you everything. And the, what I love about it is it's all scientific fact. It's, it's based in that. So I mean, they go over something called a meta analysis, where they 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 take a bunch of studies that are not. This is a very important part too. You need um, non-biased. Uh, science. Because what happens is these industries, the, the meat, the dairy, the egg industry, um, they pay scientists to do studies and experiments to get the answers that they want. And you're like, that's unethical, that's not possible. And, and they, they, they do it, and they say, oh, it's technically, this is, this is, we were looking for what we were looking for, and then we happened to find it, and so it's, it's true. So, this crazy shit like that. So, we're a good resource to find um, non-biased, um, peer-reviewed articles, meta-analysis. There's a website called um, nutritionfacts.org, and there's a book, and it's called How Not to Die. I haven't read it, I bought it actually for my dad, and I gave it to him, and he read it, and my dad eats all the meat ever, and he doesn't do it anymore. And it's crazy. He's like 50, and he's like, whoa. So. These are the top 15 causes the f of death, the f top 15 reasons Americans die. Okay. And a plant-based diet can help prevent nearly all of them, can help treat more than half of them, right? and in some cases even reverse the progression of disease, including our top three killers. Right? Now, there are drugs that can help too. Right? You can take one drug to treat uh, cholesterol every day for the rest of your life, another drug for blood sugars, uh, a few more pills for, uh, for, your, for your blood pressure. The same diet, though, does it all. Right? It's not like you know, one diet for this and then a different diet for this. Right? One diet to rule them all. <laughs> and what about drug side effects? Right? I'm not talking about a little rash or something. Prescription drugs kill more than a hundred thousand Americans every year. And I'm not talking about medication errors, not abuse, not overdose. We're talking, this is just deaths from side effects, so-called ADRs, adverse drug reactions to prescription drugs. Wait a second, a hundred thousand deaths a year? That means, let's go down the list, whoa, that means that the sixth leading cause of death in the United States is doctors. <laughs> the sixth leading cause of death is me. <laughs> Thankfully, I can be prevented with a plant-based <laughs> diet. I think that the, the main thing is ethical connection. Because at the end of the, uh, speaking for myself, I can say that uh, I can say, oh, um, eating animals is bad for my body because uh, processed meat is a class one carcinogen, said by the World Health Organization over three years ago. Processed meat, that's like right up there with, 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 with like a uh, um, uh, cancerous shit. Yeah, and in a class one, it, it, it means it's not a correlation. It's, it's, it's actually, they know that it connects. They're like, this is going to cause cancer eventually. So that's like, that's like hot dogs. And hot dogs is what everybody eats, and that's what they give the kids in school. And it's insane to me that they can, asbestos, asbestos is the thing. So you may as well have an asbestos dog. So, <laughs> you know, so this information is important because you're like, oh, okay, I don't want to die. But then there's the environment, of course, and then there's the environment saying, oh, okay, ocean dead zones, and it's not good for the planet, and... Do you think there should be any concern of us making this documentary? Of course. If you don't realize right now that you're putting your neck on the chopping block, you know, <clears throat> you, you better take that camera and throw it away. It's an environmental disaster that's being ignored by the very people who should be championing.
Let's look at the fundamental problem here. No one wants to talk about it. Because they're, they're membership organizations, you know, a lot of them. They're looking to maximize the number of people making contributions. The leading cause of environmental degradation is... Um, we uh, need to address that as well. It's not up to the Department of Water Resources. Hard to actually target, like, one thing. I, I don't necessarily know what it is. There's suppression and mismanagement of information you know, everywhere it abounds. And it starts at the local level, but then it goes all the way to Congress. When you consider the devastation it's having on our planet as well as the oceans. And we're in the middle of the largest mass extinction of species in 65 million years. And they can dictate the federal policies because they have so much political power. And one of the largest industries on the planet with the biggest environmental impact trying to keep us in the dark about how it's operating. That's the one thing no one talks about. You know, everybody goes around that. Unfortunately, we are no longer able to fund your film project. We had a meeting, and due to the growing controversial subject matter, we have some concerns that we have to pull out. You're going up against people that have massive legal resources, and you have nothing. A lot of people just keep their mouths shut because they don't want to. they don't want to be the next one with the bullet to their head. I don't know that I would want to comment on that. The sustainability and a lot of stuff, blah, blah, blah. Okay, sure, I can care about that. Eventually, though, I'm probably not going to live to be over maybe 150 with, like, you know, technology making me into a robot and or anything. But beyond that, um, I, don't, I don't connect with the planet as much because I'm not going to be on it forever. But it's the ethical connections, looking into an animal's eyes and, and just Understanding that it's a living, breathing, sentient, caring, feeling thing, feels pain, and it does feel love. Like, I look at my dog and my cat, my cat sometimes is a little bastard, but actually, <laughs> says my dog, actually. But, but you know, but you can tell that they, well, I can tell that, that, that they love me. And, and so, I just don't differentiate between species. I'm like, why? Why? Bones was my dog. Hey. Your, your dog? Yeah. Stay. Bonesy, stay. Because, I mean, just look at, like, it, my dog is actually, she's a, uh, she's so cute. I, I, she, well, you can see on my Twitter, I have pictures of her everywhere, um, but she's a rescue from Taiwan. And, I mean, in Taiwan, they, just when I got her, two weeks later, they, they made it illegal to have dog farms. But the dog farms are, you know, they have dogs that we have as pets, and then they breed them, and then they eat them. And how different? to what we do like you know it's it's easy for me to be like oh my god you can't you can't eat a dog it's a dog but it's like what the fuck it's like well, this you know so i would suggest well if you do any one thing to explore veganism i would say to watch the documentary earthlings yes. that's the one thing you need to do one thing and if you're not vegan afterwards oh well but um and watch the whole thing like it's it's hard but it's hard for a reason <laughs> So that, that's my long story. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Three primary life forces exist on this planet.
nature. animals, and humankind. We are the Earthlings. Make the connection. Earthlings. It is estimated that 3,000 animals will die every second in slaughterhouses around the world. Competition to produce inexpensive meat, dairy and eggs has led to animal agribusiness treating animals as objects and commodities. Animals are enslaved for their entire lives and are confined in cages, warehouses and other unnatural environments. Males endure forced semen extraction while females are raped and have their babies stolen from them. Animals are given ear tags, nose rings and are branded. They are castrated and have their horns, tails, beaks and teeth cut off. These mutilations often occur without anesthesia. Animals are crammed into slatted trucks and forced to travel long distances. They arrive at the slaughterhouse injured, weak, starved and severely dehydrated, only to be forcibly moved by handlers. Whether free range, local, organic or factory farmed, the animals are slaughtered, often with a knife to the throat. The industry has tried to convince us that this can be done humanely, but there can never be a right way to kill someone who does not want to die. How many of you have ever seen the movie The Matrix? Uh, yeah. All right, so maybe more than half of us. Right, for those of you who haven't seen the movie The Matrix, there's a scene in the very beginning of the film where the main character is presented with two pills, one blue and one red, and he has to make a choice. If he chooses the blue pill, he'll fall asleep, and when he wakes up, everything will be exactly the way it's always been. If he chooses the red pill, he'll finally learn the truth. I'm here today to give you that red pill. But let me make this very clear to you. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm not here to tell you how to think, how to feel, and I'm certainly not here to tell you what to eat. I'm simply here to provide you with information. 
Now what you do with that information is solely up to you. So what does the matrix look like? Let me show you. Now, despite what you might be thinking, these two circles are not equal. I repeat, these two circles are not equal. One is, in fact, larger than the other. What I need you to do is determine which one that is. So please raise your hand if you believe the blue circle is larger than the red. All right. Please raise your hand if you believe the red circle is larger than the blue. All right, very good. Now, before I said anything about these two circles, what was your first instinct? Equal, right? Because they look equal. And the reason why they look equal is because, in fact, they are equal. These two circles are identical. <laughs> Yet I got just about every one of you to raise your hand and say that they're not. So what do we learn? That you can be manipulated like that to believe in something that goes against your natural instincts. Just, just imagine, just imagine as a child you're taught that the blue circle is larger than the red. If you say it enough times, you convince yourself that's the truth. If you're told the lie enough times, it becomes part of your reality. And if enough people are taught that lie, that the blue circle is larger than the red, well now it becomes part of the culture. And if that culture then passes that misinformation along to the next generation, well now it becomes tradition. And what we have to remember is that just because we have a tradition doesn't mean it's morally acceptable. Tradition and morality are not always the same. I mean, can you think of any traditions that we once had in the United States of America that we no longer have? That today we think back and that was immoral. Yeah. Slavery. Slavery, right? Less than 200 years ago. And that was a tradition. So the traditions we have today doesn't necessarily mean they're morally acceptable. And as we evolve as a culture, so do our traditions. Now, the matrix is a story. It's a story when told enough times to enough people it becomes part of that culture. It becomes the tradition. And this story is being told over and over every day. In fact, if you believe the image on the carton is where you're getting your milk from, you're deceiving yourself. This is a fantasy. It only exists in your head. It's a blue pill fed to you by the industry to get you to buy their product. This is the matrix, the lie we tell ourselves about where our food is coming from. The reality is far more disturbing. 90 to 95% of the milk, the meat, and the eggs that we consume in the United States are coming from these conditions. Now, this is called factory farming. This is where you take thousands of hens, pigs, and cows, and you can find them into warehouses. In fact, every year in the United States, 10 billion, right, 10 billion cows, pigs, and chickens are being slaughtered for food. So what that works out to be is that every second in the United States, 300 animals are killed, just like that. So 300, 600, 900, 1,200. By the time I'm done talking today, there'll be over a million animals that have been slaughtered. And most of us don't even blink an eye. I mean, how is it possible that in the United States of America, we can kill, we can slaughter 300 animals every second and not question that? because of the story we've been told. The story justifies the action. If you say it enough times, you actually convince yourself that's the truth. How many of you were taught as a child you need to eat meat to get protein? I, mean, I know I was. How many of you were taught you need to drink cow's milk to get strong bones? Not dog milk. <laughs> not chimpanzee milk. Not elephant milk. Not rhino milk. Not hippo milk. Not tiger milk. Not lion milk. Not giraffe milk. Not elephant milk, did I say that already? I think you get the point. Not even our own mother's milk, but we need to drink cow's milk to get strong bones. The absurdity of drinking the milk from any other species and any other being besides our own mother, when it's said enough times, loses its absurdness. So all we're going to do today is find out if the matrix is telling the truth. Now the first thing we've been taught is that our diet is natural. You know, we eat meat, dairy, and eggs, so therefore it must be natural. So let's find out. Now you have two images on the wall, all right? Again, remember the Rorschach test. You have two images on the wall. I want you to tell me all the thoughts that come to mind when you see the image on the left. And don't be afraid to scream out. Nobody's going to uh, get sent to the principal. What do you see? Yum. Fresh, yum, sweet, right? If I came into the room with a basket of strawberries that looked just like that, organic, and I put them on the chair right here, now what would be your thoughts? Okay, same thoughts. What would you think if, if one of us got up and started chewing on the strawberries? 
maybe we'd want to join in. If I come into the room with a basket of strawberries, how many of your mouth starts to salivate? Your mouth starts to water? If I take a strawberry and I put it under your nose, what do you smell? If I take a knife and I slice that strawberry in half and put that under your nose, now what do you smell? Notice how all the sensations remain the same. You see a strawberry and it looks like a strawberry. You smell a strawberry and it smells like a strawberry. And you take a bite out of a strawberry and surprise, surprise, it tastes like a strawberry. Exactly, it's a strawberry. But what thoughts come to mind when you see the image on the right? Cute. Cute. It's kind of a rigged audience. Um, you're, in a, you're in a vegan restaurant. Um, but you know, when I go to a classroom, you know, half the response, you'll get half the kids who say, oh, cute. Animal, pig, Wilbur, babe. So half the class will see an animal, and the other half of the class will see bacon, sausage, ham, pig's feet, pork, and hot dog. They'll see a food. It's one or the other. You're either seeing an animal or you're seeing food. Now, what would happen if I took one of the pigs living, brought him into the room right here, and put him, put him right in front of you? Does that change it? Now what do we see? And I mean, what would we think if one of, one of us got up and started chewing on the pig? Not very normal. Um, if I come into the room with a pig under my arm, how many of your mouth starts to salivate? Right? If I take a pig and I put it under your nose, what do you smell? You smell a pig. Just like if I took a dog and put it under your nose, you smell a dog. A cat, you smell a cat. If I took a knife and I sliced that pig in half and put that under your nose, now what do you smell? You smell the stench of death. You smell a rotting corpse, bacteria, decomposing flesh. You see, there's a process involved, and I'm here today to show you that process of how you convert this animal into this product. Why should, it, why should it be kept a secret? Why should we not know what we're participating in and what we're putting in our body? Now, let's make the situation slightly more realistic. If I were to put a pig on this side of the room living and a butcher's knife on, side, on the side of that room, I mean, how many people would be willing to pick up the knife and take the life of that animal? It's very rare, right? And if somebody did that, that's all right, but how many people in this room would try to stop that person from doing that, right? Would we try that? Of course. That's compassion. I mean, that is the greatest quality in the human race. There's no other species on this planet that has that level of compassion to extend to all living beings. But if you would stop somebody from killing a pig in front of you and then go home and have this for breakfast, well, that's called hypocrisy. You know, just because it comes in a nice, neat package all dressed up in your supermarket, just because you didn't take the knife and shove it through their jugular, just because you didn't get blood in your clothes, and just because you didn't hear their screams doesn't mean you didn't participate in the killing. Every time we buy this product, we are supporting somebody else doing what we ourselves wouldn't want to do, what we ourselves wouldn't want to see, and what we ourselves wouldn't want to hear. Now, if you still see bacon sauce in the hand when I bring a pig into the room, what happens when I change it to... Oh, one sec. I'm supposed to, like, not... There we go. All right. Oh, all right. It's the common response. Now, I've never heard anybody say, yum. Nobody ever sees dog feet, hot dog. So, why not? Why don't we see a food? Well, we've, we've been accustomed to view this animal as our pet. I mean, how many of you have a dog or a cat, right? How many of you have a pig? Not so much. All right, so, but there are other cultures. There are other cultures. Again, the, the cultural story for us is, this is your pet. In another culture, certain parts of the world, they eat cats and dogs. That's their culture. That's their story they've been told. And how do we feel about that? A lot of people think it's disgusting, right? I, I imagine every one of you probably thinks it's disgusting to a dog. Why would it be disgusting to eat this animal and not disgusting to eat this animal? Why would it be wrong to eat this animal and right to eat this animal? And most importantly, why would it be wrong to kill this animal and right to kill this animal? It's culture. It's the story. It's the matrix that we've been told. One culture sees this as a pet. This is a food. Another culture might see this as a pet, and this is a food. Another culture might see them both as food. Certain parts of India, the cow is sacred. They would never think about eating a cow in certain parts of India. Is that wrong? Is that unnatural? That's just the story they've been told. But culture is just a story. That's all it is. It's just make-believe. What I'm concerned with is what is natural to the human species. Because every culture has a different story. But you take somebody from Asia, Africa, South America, North America, Europe, and we're all the same species. We're all human beings. So let's take a three-year-old from any country in the world, and you put that three-year-old in a room, and you line up five animals in front of that three-year-old. A pig, a dog, a cow, a cat, and a chicken. Do you think the three-year-old is going to know which one to eat and which one to pet? What's the three-year-old most likely going to do or try to do? 
play with them all. It's going to try to play with them all. The three-year-old has to be taught, no, 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 no. Don't play with him. Eat him. Play with him. Pet him. That's what we were taught. We didn't choose our diet. Our diet is a learned behavior. We were raised to perceive this animal as your pet and this animal as your food. But that's not the natural perception. The natural perception is that they're all of our, our companions. So our parents chose our diet based upon the cultural story. And if you have children, you base their diet on the cultural story being told, which is the same story. Awesome. That's awesome. Right. Right. Come on. You know what? You're awesome. <laughs> Thanks. Um, you too, I guess. <laughs>